This is the last episode in the series about making and managing networks for Dante-based audio systems. I hope you've learned a lot of useful points and tips to save time and hassle. We've looked at VLANs, trunks, link aggregation groups, cable types, bandwidth management, system monitoring, loop protection, redundancy, and more. Now, finally, it's time to get serious about security. How to protect your network from problems ranging from simple honest mistakes to malicious hacks. We're going to take a look at password protection, access lists, and radius servers. Yamaha's SWR and SWP series have far greater support for security than your average digital audio device, and even more than many switches from regular IT providers. Of course, Dante devices themselves can use PIN codes for protection, or you can use Dante Domain Manager in a fixed installation to manage multiple user access to the Dante system. But that is not normally practical for live sound production and mobile events. So, we will focus on the facilities provided within Yamaha's L2 managed switches. First, the passwords. For ease of getting started, the SWR and SWP2 switches have no username and no password for administrator access. The SWP1 switches just have a username, which is administrator. So it's certainly a good idea to update them to something more secure. Open the web GUI and go to the management menu then Access Management. In User Settings and Password Settings, you can create a password for administrative access. And another password for general user login, which will allow information and settings to be viewed, but not changed. In the User Settings below, specific usernames and passwords can be set for certain colleagues. And you can determine whether each one has admin access or not. There are two user levels. Read and write for administrators or read only for the others. The next level for protecting your network is to restrict access to the switch programming interface from certain known IP addresses only. Staying within the access management menu, open the Various Service Settings page. Here, you can set up the restrictions for each method of programming the switches, whether by web, GUI, or Telnet, Secure Shell, and TFTP. These last two are disabled by default anyway. If you're going to make settings here, of course, make sure you first allow the computer you're using right now. You can restrict the management access to certain VLANs, such as only VLAN 1, and specify conditions such as denying specific addresses or only allowing specific addresses. So this method would only be relevant in situations where IP addresses are static, never changing from day to day. Most Dante networks for live events are run using auto IP addressing, such as with a DHCP server. In that case, there are more suitable security methods to implement. But if you do restrict the IP addresses, it's a good idea to allow more than one, so you have a backup. And of course, document everything separately, so you have a reference for what you have programmed. Also, remember that here we are only restricting access to the switch programming. We are not yet protecting the rest of the network. So let's move on and take a look at access lists based upon MAC addresses. While IP addresses are set in software and can be changed frequently in some networks, MAC addresses are hardware specific and cannot be altered. Each network device will have a unique MAC address. MAC 
means media access control. So you can find out the MAC address of each device you wish to allow on the network and block all others. Let me show you how. In the switch web GUI, open the detailed settings menu and open the access list. Then click create access list and click new to get started. Select Mac access list and type a comment for reference if you like. Then click add to start programming a restriction. You can choose to make a list allowing specified devices only or make a list to allow most devices but deny just a few. It would be more secure to deny most devices but only allow a few. So add each device's MAC address one by one in the source address field where you specify the host address. Add the MAC address of each switch in the network, each Dante device, other necessary devices, and the control computers you wish to use. It's helpful that all the MAC addresses are discovered and displayed by LAN monitor software. However, they need to be input in a different format. Rather than six groups of two characters, we need three groups of four characters here. These small differences are not unusual for different types of IT equipment. Many devices have their MAC address printed on their case or on their shipping box, so it's not difficult to discover. It could take some time to input all the addresses. Just as well that you can save a switch config and load it into another to avoid having to type all the MAC addresses again. If you want to get clever, you can specify a MAC address with a wildcard bit. Then you can allow any device from a certain manufacturer while blocking any other, because each manufacturer uses their own identifier at the start of the MAC address. For example, Yamaha switches start with AC44F2, while most Yamaha professional audio devices start with 00 A0DE. At the right side of the list, you can see blue order arrows. This is for order of priority. So at the bottom of the priority order, add a condition to deny all addresses. In that way, all MAC addresses that are not included in the higher priority conditions will be blocked. Once you've entered and confirmed your list, it's time to apply the switch ports and or VLANs. I recommend you don't apply it to everything yet. Leave at least one port with free access so you can test what you've done first in case of mistakes or typo errors. So in the apply access list, select most ports or select a VLAN, then click Specify All, and select the access list you just created. Then press OK. Notice you could create different lists for different ports or VLANs, or use different lists for different projects if your equipment is mobile. Now it's worth a test. Check what happens if you connect an unspecified device to one of the restricted ports. Will it connect and be discovered? Hopefully not, if you've made the list correctly. To discover the device's MAC address, or addresses, connect it to a free port on the switch, or another switch, and run LAN monitor to discover the details. Remember, some devices use two MAC addresses with one physical port. This includes the Dante primary ports of R-series I.O. units, CL and QL mixing consoles, and HY144D cards for Rivage PM systems, as well as some Yamaha MTX, MRX, and XMV devices, where Dante and remote control data share the same physical network port. So, you will need to allow both MAC addresses for these devices.
The last security feature of these switches I'm going to teach you about is the RADIUS server. I'm not going to take you through the whole setup procedure because it's rather detailed and requires some specific programming via the command line interface. But the main point is that the SWP2, SWR2310 and 2311 switches are all capable of acting as the RADIUS server. So you don't need an external server for this security function. RADIUS means Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service and provides authentication, authorization and accounting management for network users. It can be used when a lot of different people, up to 2,000 in our case, require access to different devices while being blocked from other groups of devices on the network. Again, the complexity of setting up this service means it's only practical for long-term system installations which don't change so frequently. You can designate one switch to act as a radio server and the others as authenticators. Then register the MAC address of each known device. You can add a description allowing a certain VLAN number to be automatically applied to the, the switch port that is used. That way you can easily differentiate between Dante devices and others. Only registered devices will be able to join the secured parts of the network. And even then, different devices can be granted access to specific VLANs. So if the Dante network shares infrastructure with the office equipment, you can limit access to the Dante equipment for just a small number of trusted computers. Well, now we have reached the end of our series, Networked Audio Systems Made Easy. I hope you've learned a lot during these seven videos, and I hope it gives you confidence to create and expand more Dante-based audio systems. We've studied VLANs, trunks, link aggregation, IGMP snooping and querier, bandwidth requirements, network monitoring, network redundancy, password protection, access control lists, and other security features. Of course, it's not going to make you an instant expert about all things networking, but you should now have the knowledge to construct and maintain reliable Dante-based audio systems using Yamaha L2 network switches. Be sure to keep up to date with the latest product news and developments at Yamaha's professional audio web pages and on our social media channels. I wish you success with all your future network audio projects.